Welcome to my channel, my name is Jared. This is another Sunday update video. I also post silent build videos on Fridays and sometimes on Wednesdays, so be sure to check those out as well. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the Land Cruiser, the Beetle, and the Model T. So, for the Land Cruiser, uh, in my last video you would have seen that I got the engine uh, all assembled and got it running. Um, the next step on this project is going to be uh, putting the transmission and transfer case and drive shafts back on it. Um, I'm in the process of cleaning the transmission and then um, I'll reseal it and paint it and, and we'll get it installed. Um, I installed the clutch plate and the clutch pressure plate and while installing the pressure plate it seemed like one of the bolts might have been stripped out so I'm gonna have to take a look at that and address that before I can get the transmission on. Uh, it could be the coils and the flywheel and maybe it's gonna need um, a helicoil or something in there to fix it or maybe it was just a bolt that I was using. Um, but I'm gonna look into that. Um, the other thing that I've been trying to sort out on this engine is getting a oil pressure gauge hooked up. So um, I just rebuilt the engine I started it up, it runs good, but I need to run it longer and kind of let it run itself in. But before I do that, I want to make sure I have correct oil pressure. I'm pretty sure I do, but I just want to be safe. Um, so I bought a, a manual oil pressure gauge, um, which I assumed would work no problem. But the, the fitting that goes into the block is just slightly too big. It, even when you compare it to the size of the threads on this, um, sending unit they appear to be the same but this one is kind of tapered and this one is not and it just it just won't go in there so um, I'm going to either have to come up with some kind of adapter to get this pressure gauge to work on this engine um, or maybe I'll have to take the gauge cluster out of the tub and try to wire that in to this sending unit so that I can get oil pressure reading if you guys have hooked up um, a manual gauge like this to this engine. Let me know how you did it. I'd like to, I'd really like to use that gauge. It's more accurate and it'd be a lot easier than trying to get the uh, instrument cluster wired up to work. So um, that's pretty much it for the Land Cruiser. Like I said, once I figure out that, then I'll run the engine. I'll probably do that as part of a video maybe um, so you guys can see the results on that. Um, but then we'll get the transmission back in it and uh, get this thing to where it's almost ready to start moving. After that, it'll be working on the, um, the body. I'll do the body work on the body, I'll get the tub mounted on the frame, then it can be moved in and out, and then I'll start working on the body work and painting for all the other panels, the fenders, hood, all that stuff. Um, so that's the Land Cruiser. Uh, the Beetle, still here in the garage, making progress. Um, if you haven't already, you should watch the video where I tore down the engine. Um, Basically, I pulled the heads off, and I was hoping that I could get away with just replacing the seals on the push rod, push rod tubes and putting it back together. Um, but once I took it apart, I discovered some rust and some pitting in this cylinder. And so after discovering that, I pulled the cylinders, pulled the pistons, um, and the plan was to just hone out that cylinder. Well, hone all the cylinders, um, and then put new rings in it and keep moving forward. But when I um, looked online, to order the rings, I discovered just how cheap it is to replace the pistons and everything. So I ended up ordering a set of pistons, rings, and cylinders that are slightly larger. Uh, it's going to bump it up just a little bit over 1600 cc, uh, but it should still be able to work just fine with the single port heads and the small uh, original carburetor. Um, but anyway, so I ordered that whole piston ring cylinder set for like 150 bucks. Um, so once I get those, you know, the plan is to put it back together. Um, however, I got a message earlier today or a comment on that uh, disassemble video and somebody said, hey, was that a crack in between the valves on that cylinder head? And so I came out here and checked and sure enough, um, there is a crack here on this head. Now, um, there is, there's like this, this ring here for the valve seats and they're not cracked. Um, and they seem like they probably seat just fine. And so this crack here is maybe just fine. Maybe it doesn't hurt anything being here. Um, but I'm concerned about it and I don't really want to uh, have to take this all apart again because of something like this. So I'm looking into my options um, as far as maybe new heads or maybe repairing this one. I'm not really sure exactly what's going to happen there. But um, I'll figure out 
what the best solution is to move forward with that and then I'm still going to hopefully get this resolved and get this engine um, reassembled and back in the car pretty quickly because I do want this thing to be able to move uh, pretty quick because I've got other stuff I want to do on other uh, cars and this is a spot that I need to do that in. So um, anyway, hopefully I'll get that sorted out soon. I will be doing um, one video where I assemble the whole engine, I think. I'm going to put the new pistons, cylinders, heads, everything on, all the tin, hopefully get the whole thing reassembled in one video. So that's going to be one upcoming video. There's also going to be an upcoming video on the transaxle. Um, I'm going to pull that out of the car, reseal it, and I've got new um, mounts for it. Then there'll also be a separate video where I rebuild the carburetor. Um, for the engine. So that'll probably be the next video on the Beetle will be the carburetor while I'm waiting on all the parts for this engine. Um, but we're making good progress on it. Um, and like I said, I'm really going to try to push this thing along and keep it moving so I can get this thing to drive out of the garage pretty quickly. Um, so on to the Model T. Um, if you saw my last video on this project, you would have seen that I painted the wheels. I pulled the old uh, rims off and old tires off and I painted the wheels which are kind of just like the hubs um, on this car. So they came out really nice. You should watch that video if you haven't. Um, I've got them covered in plastic now because uh, I just got done washing the car again. I used some CLR and a scrub pad. Just kind of went over the whole thing. Uh, tried to get as much dirt and loose rust and stuff off as I can and then I'm going to be coating the body. Uh, soon, so I'll do a video on that where I kind of show you what my plan is on how to kind of treat the exterior of the car to preserve it. I'm um, definitely not painting it, it's not going to look new by any means, it's going to look very aged as it does now. Um, but hopefully, it'll be preserved, and hopefully, you won't feel like you need a tetanus shot after you touch the car. So, that will be coming out soon. Um, you can see here, real quick, this is the um, transfer case and transmission. For the Land Cruiser. It's still a little dirty, but I've I've already put a lot of time into cleaning it and I've still got some more to do. Um, but yeah, that'll be cleaned up and painted and then new seals and then it'll go back in the Land Cruiser. Um, over here on the Model T, you can see I've been trying to get this um, fuel cap out. This thing is completely seized and stuck in there and it's all broken. It was broken before I even got the car, so somebody tried taking this off a long time ago and they couldn't do it. Um, I've just been soaking it with some penetrating oil and hopefully after a few days I'll be able to get it out. Um, I also was able to get a new key for it. The car did not come with the key but luckily they're all numbered and there's a number here on the um, key slot so I was able to buy this on, M on uh, eBay for like 10 bucks. Um, and of course it was seized, it didn't work but I put some penetrating oil on there and now that's turning fine. Um, but so yeah basically that's where we're at with the Model T. Um, like I said before, um, first goal on this thing is to get it to roll. So I gotta get those new tires mounted. Uh, I took the, the steel rims that hold the, the tires and the tubes. I had them sandblasted and then I need to paint them and I'll get the new tires mounted and then I can put them back on the car and then it will roll. Um, but then after that, then I'll be uh, moving on to the engine. I'll pull the engine out, clean it up, reseal it, paint it. Um, make sure it's going to run properly, hopefully, and uh, get it back in the car. So, um, that's pretty much it for the Model T. Um, that's it for the Beetle and for the Land Cruiser. So I think that's it for this week. Um, thanks for watching, guys. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Thanks. Bye.